from the campus of Iowa Western, you're watching your hometown information station, CBTV 17. This week on Council Bluffs News, a water main break puts the city on a 30-hour tap water advisory. Find out how Iowa Western and local businesses cope. Then, the big announcement. River's Edge Park is set to open this spring with a huge concert featuring a legendary band coming to Council Bluffs. Plus, the foundation making sure good teachers get the recognition they deserve. That and more all on this week's Council Bluffs News. Hello and welcome to this week's Council Bluffs News. I'm James Lathrop. Wednesday, January 9th, a water main breaks at the intersection of North 9th Street and Avenue E, flooding a two-block radius. Soon after, the city puts out a water boil alert, affecting Council Bluffs and neighboring towns. City officials, though, are looking to turn the event into a learning experience. Just before 6.30 a.m., the phones start ringing. The Council Bluffs Waterworks is issuing precautionary boil water advisory for the entire city until further notice. The code red system warns residents that due to a water main break, all water meant for consumption will need to be boiled. A move that Council Bluffs Waterworks Doug Drummy says is just in case. We're estimating about two million gallons of water uh, came out of the where the leak is and uh, when that happened we had low pressure with low pressure, there's a chance contamination got into the main, sending the contaminated water around the city. Until we take water samples out in the system that we've already done, and we set them up in our laboratory and culture them. Which takes about 24 hours. Drummy hopes to lift the advisory before noon of the following day. Meanwhile, all over town, businesses are trying to cope with the changes. Employees are scrambling at the 2323 West Broadway High V store to keep water on the shelves. Employees tell me that they've gone through 12 pallets of bottled water within the first nine hours, with another truckload on the way. Restaurants and bars hit too, some closing because of the tap water advisory. It's a situation that the Director of Public Health, Don Dirks, says could teach a lesson in preparation. If you have to buy can pop, if you have to buy bagged ice, if you have to buy bottled water, where in Omaha or surrounding areas can you quickly, you should have contacts that you can contact to get those products in as quickly as possible. The same goes for residents in their homes. Are people prepared? You know, do they have bottled water? You know, two couple cases of bottled water stored at home for events like this. Then, as quickly as the alert is announced. The precautionary boil water advisory is being lifted effective at 1.15 today. Again, that water boil alert was just a precautionary measure and testing confirms that there were no contaminants in the water system. Now everything is back to normal for some, while others are not so lucky. It's just not David Peters' day. And we come in, my fiance went downstairs and said, Dave, there's about six inches of water downstairs. Peters then decides to go to the store to pick up a vacuum to take care of the mess. So I get in my car and drive. Although the streets are flooded from the water main break. These streets flood all the time. We're used to driving on the streets with water up above the curbs. Peters drives east on Avenue E and takes a right on 9th. But then the unexpected happens and the whole street caved in. My car went at a 45 degree angle down in the water. His Pontiac died and began to fill with water. A bystander helped him from his vehicle. Towed it up here to my driveway, charged me an arm and leg to tow it half a block. $90 to be exact. Now Peters is just trying to salvage his basement, worrying about who's responsible. Getting all the carpet up for the insurance adjuster comes and hopefully they cover the stuff downstairs, make sure it gets taken care of. There were no signs signifying the roads around David Peters' home were closed, and he's hoping the city covers at least a portion of the damage, given his car is now totaled and his basement is now in disarray. 
The break also affected the campus of Iowa Western. Students woke up Wednesday morning to no water. IWTV student Marie Zeitner shows us how they handle the frustration. Three days into the spring semester and Iowa Western truly is a dry campus. Students are told don't drink the water. What? The water main break on the west end of town near 9th Street and Avenue E, resulting in a water boil alert for Iowa Western. I didn't know water main break, breaks like that without warning or something. The water ban causes fountains throughout the school to be unavailable for students, forcing them to buy bottled water from vending machines. I see a lot more people drinking sodas or energy drinks, but not water. In the bookstore, water is selling out fast, and at 10 a.m., only half the shelf remains. In the cafeteria, students cope by drinking milk or buying water. Every single pop machine was labeled uh, no soda or juice, I believe. Luckily, some meals were prepared overnight before the water main break. Turkey, netted turkey. We do have uh, fried food. And since a thousand meals are made for students every day, any water used by the kitchen staff must be brought to a rolling boil for at least one minute. Our students are safe and they can come down to us and to the cafeteria and eat, enjoy the food. Students just want to drink the water again. I hope they get it fixed soon. <laughs> for CBTV 17, I'm Marie Zeitner. It's seen flooding, opposition, and money troubles, but now it's nearly completed. River's Edge Park has taken on quite a few problems when it comes to its construction. Now a grand opening is announced with a special concert presentation. I talked with Council Bluffs Parks and Rec Director Larry Foster. It's been a long time coming, but the wait is almost over. Completing River's Edge Park hasn't been an easy task. But CB Parks and Rec Director Larry Foster says it's worth the wait. We've made excellent progress. Uh, we were set back for almost an entire year due to the flood. And with completion around the corner, a grand opening date is announced. On May the 25th, the City of Council Bluffs is prepared to say we're going to open up River's Edge Park. The park, in the works for years, will be able to host a variety of different functions. Local events, uh, regional events, uh, events that, that serve of uniquely Council Bluffs. Rumors of Celebrate CB events at the park are up in the air too. And where a muddy levee once was, now an amphitheater. The amphitheater is constructed of uh, precast concrete columns that are, that are laid in the ground. You can sit on the edge of those or there's green space behind that you can put a folding chair or a blanket. The space can accommodate crowd volumes of almost any size. Foster says up to at least 15,000 people, a number that is key to the park's grand opening. Let's, not, let's talk about the Beach Boys a little. That's right, the Beach Boys. Round, round, get around, I get around, yeah, get One of the few rock bands that have lasted the test of time is coming to Council Bluffs. Couldn't think of a better group to open up this park on this river than the Beach Boys. They'll be kicking off a three-week celebration of the park's opening amongst a multitude of other events sure to please all of which that are not yet set in stone. I think within the next oh, couple, two or three weeks, we'll be able to announce more really exciting activities that will happen in this three week period. We'll be bringing you more information on that grand opening event as we get the details. Be sure to stay tuned to Council Bluffs News in the coming weeks. You can also stay tuned to our Facebook page for that information. That's facebook.com slash CBTV17. Coming up after the break, John P. Nelson joins us in the studio to talk about the Excellence in Teaching Award and how you can nominate your favorite educator. perfect to be a perfect parent. When you adopt a child from foster care, just being there makes all the difference. When someone abducts a child, they're not about to advertise it, but we will. Sign up at wirelessamberalerts.org to get free Amber Alert text messages on your cell phone 
Help put a child abductor out of business for good. Wireless Amber Alerts. A child is calling for help. I'm starving. What's for breakfast? Guten Tag! Yo, Hannes, Ross! I bring you arts-enriched raisin brahms, fortified with increased test scores and creative problem-solving skills. It's good! And good for you. Bobby? Susie? Don't worry, that's just the power of the arts! <laughs> <laughs> Feed your kids the arts. For 10 simple ways to learn how, visit americansforthearts.org. Welcome back. Joining me in the studio today is John P. Nelson of the Nelson Foundation. He's here to tell me a little bit about the Excellence in Teaching Award. John, thanks for joining me. Well, I'm glad to be here. The uh, Teaching Award, uh, which has been given for the last six years by the Nelson Foundation, uh, which was started by my parents at their uh, deaths, uh, is a foundation that um, focuses primarily on helping young people. And we started this teaching award, as I mentioned six years ago, so that we rewarded teachers who have such a, a tremendous impact on children. Okay. Tell me a little bit more about the, the foundation and how it got started. It got started by my parents. Uh, and uh, they wanted to do, um, they were very active in the community and in helping children and they wanted to have that initiative carried on after their passing. So uh, they put a substantial amount of money into the foundation and each year we do uh, many things, uh, helping uh, uh, young people but with scholarships and so forth. But one of the things that we kind of focus on is uh, this teaching award. Uh, that goes to six teachers. We've been doing it for, uh, I guess, six years. And uh, we ask for nominations by not only other teachers, but students, parents, and so forth. Uh, and then we have a committee uh, of educators and other people in the community that go through the nominations, and uh, we then make the award. Okay, and what, what is the award exactly? Well, they get a, a trophy. Uh, we run some advertisements in the local paper, so they get some uh, publicity. Uh, and then we give them $5,000 each uh, as a cash stipend, and we provide a $250 for them to take their students out for uh, Jimmy John's, I guess is what they take them out for. Delicious. So they get a healthy lunch. And um, that, then um, uh, we have a very nice banquet that we hold each year where we make the awards and we invite all the past recipients as well as the key administrators from the school systems. And this award goes to uh, public school teachers at either Lewis Central or the Council of School System. So how would somebody go about nominating a teacher? It's very simple. The uh, Omaha Community Foundation uh, has a website. You can go to that and then uh, click on uh, the teaching award or you can go to the, either the Council Bluffs or the Lewis Central website and click on Teaching Award. Uh, and then the nomination papers are there or where you can enter your uh, nominee. Uh, and that's about all you have to do. All right. Well, John, thank you very much for coming in today. Thank you for having me. And I hope we get a lot of your uh, audience members who think of the good teachers that help their children and have helped them that they will nominate some of them for this award. The deadline for that uh, nomination is February 22nd. You can sign up and nominate a teacher at the NelsonFoundation.com. Stay tuned, more Council Bluffs news is after the break. Looking for these? You drive buzzed, it could be one very expensive ride. First, you gotta make bail. Then pay me to get your car back. Your insurance premiums will go through the roof. And my legal fees just keep adding up. All told, it could end up costing you $10,000. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Take out meals for just $12.99. Call them. Sherry Pearson. You are the sole surviving heir of the King of Montanopolis, and you are now worth $45 million. I'm rich! This can't be real! Of course it's not real. Come on. Having money isn't about luck. Like that takeout meal. Cook at home instead, you can save thousands a year. Feed me. Feed the pig!
separate raw meats from other foods by using different cutting boards. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Hi, welcome to the Council Plus Animal Shelter. I'm Mary Jones, founder and president of Solus, support our local animal shelter. And this adorable little guy who you can hear whining because he wants attention is Maverick. Maverick is 10 weeks old. He's a little shepherd mix. And he's such a smart little dog. The people that surrendered him had already trained him to hit a bell by their door to let them know that he needed to go outside and do his nature call. If you're interested in this darling little German Shepherd or Shepherd mix, we're gonna call him, Maverick, his phone number is 2746. It never ceases to amaze me the different combinations that you get when you mix different dog breeds. This is Piccolo. Piccolo is six to eight months old, and he's listed as a dachshund. You can see dachshund in his body, but you look at his ears, and these are definitely not dachshund ears. I'm not sure what kind of ears they are, but let me tell you, they stand straight up, and he is just the cutest little guy. Yes, you are. You are just as cute as you can be. He's definitely a combination dog, but it's, you know, life is full of surprises and sometimes they're just lots of fun. And so is this little guy, Piccolo, file number 2660. Oh, he gives kisses too. Smile, Piccolo. <laughs> we started a new year and now's the perfect time, perfect time, in fact, to come and adopt a kitty cat from the Council of Santa Shelter. This is Kokomo. Kokomo is eight months old. She's just as sweet as she can be. She's all dressed up in a beautiful brown tabby suit, a little short suit to boot. And she would be just a perfect addition to your family. If you're interested in this cute little Kokomo kitty, her phone number is 2659. If you love those beautiful long-haired cats, do we have a deal for you? This is Bosco. Bosco is a beautiful long-haired boy. He's two years old and he, he has this beautiful markings around his neck. It's like a white collar or possibly rings. But my goodness, what a purr machine this guy is. If you're interested in a beautiful, beautiful Bosco cat who also gives kisses, his phone number is 2443. Show those people how gorgeous you are. Just say, look at me. I am just the most beautiful cat in the whole entire world. Bosco, file number If you're interested in adopting a pet featured in this week's Pets of the Week, call the Council Bluffs Animal Shelter at 712-328-4656. Are you looking for something to do this weekend? The Hitchcock Nature Center is having its annual snowshoe hike. If you're interested in learning or you just like to get some practice in, this is the session for you. The event is Saturday, January 19th with the first hike starting at 10 a.m. and the second around 1 p.m. Registration is just $5 per person, and you must register before January 18th, so time is limited. That 5 bucks will get you on the trail with the snowshoes, plus some refreshments. The Hitchcock Nature Center is just south of Honey Creek, Iowa. For more information, call 712-242-1197. January 18th through the 20th is the annual River City Hunting and Fishing Expo. This event is a must-attend for outdoor enthusiasts. It takes place at the Mid-America Center from 4 to 9 p.m. on Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Saturday, and 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Sunday. Admission is $8 for adults and $3 for kids 15 and under. Happening on Saturday, January 19th is the Winterfest Frozen Golf Outing. It takes place at the Dodge Riverside Golf Club here in Council Bluffs. 
It's a nine-hole tournament with three age divisions. It starts at 10 a.m. and costs $25 per person. That includes door prizes and refreshments. Pre-registration is preferred, so call 712-328-4660 to sign up. That's it for this edition of Council Bluffs News. Thanks for watching. Next week on Council Bluffs News, the future of Gunn Elementary. A company wants to buy the school and turn it into senior housing, but first the property needs to be rezoned to accommodate the volume of residents. With neighbors of the school opposing the rezone, the city council has quite a decision to make. More on that next week on Council Bluffs News. If you have any questions, comments, or story ideas, you can email us at cbtv at iwcc.edu, call us at 712-325-3312, or send us a message on Facebook. You can find us at facebook.com slash cbtv17. For your Council Bluffs News, I'm James Lathrop. See you next week.